Oh my gosh, another garden favorite. How come I didn't think about this earlier? I'm so glad I found it. Cool. So today I'm gonna work in the garden just for a little bit. There's stuff I wanna do. And I wanna trim some leaves. Like I said, you wanna work a little, you know, just little by little. You know, this, the problem is, though I love my wheelbarrows, I absolutely love them. They're kind of awkward. I'm gonna try something I have not tried yet. Let me go get something. Hang on, I'll be right back. What he wanted to do is not carry a heavy bucket. And a wheelbarrow, it could tip. I'm back. You know what this is? This is funny. This is a shopping cart that we used to take with us when we went to swap meets. We haven't done a swap meet in like three years. This is my stool. You know how I love my stool. I'm gonna leave the stool here. I found it the other day and I thought, it's got big wheels, like nine inch wheels on this. And I believe I picked this up at a thrift store. I said, this is so light and it's okay that it tips. It's not falling out unlike this thing. So I think I'm gonna try moving this around the yard because I can drag this. This is really good, it's shallow, but you, if I tipped it too much, my bucket would go flying. And this is just the plain old shopping cart with big wheels. I don't care what the front wheels are because I'm not going to push it like that. I want something I can drag behind me. And then as I go from garden to garden or wherever I'm going, lift the bucket out and drop in another one. Then this bucket will just stay full of leaves. And then I can do what I want. You know, there is one more thing. I, I've got my... Right now, I've just got my scissors. I mean... Hold on, I have one more thing I'm gonna get. I was thinking about this too the other day. Now I've got some things that hook on the chairs, you know, that hold, well, they hold uh, shovels and stuff, but I had to grow, this is a grow bag I bought. It, grow bags for me personally here in Southern California were normally so warm, just don't do that well for me. I'm not saying they don't do well for you, but for me, I have things I would rather use than that. So I was thinking, why not just put the grow bag on? I've got this hook. I'll hook this on. It doesn't matter where it gets hooked on. And then if I want to put, you know, I might put, yeah, that's good. Actually, I'll do it this way so it's higher up. And then this way, if I want to put my scissors down, I know where it is. So now I can take my scissors, drop it in the grow bag. I'm going to put my gloves on. The whole idea of gardening is don't push yourself. And I know some of you are saying, oh, I'm under snow. I can't garden. I feel so guilty. Of course you don't feel guilty. I'm leaving this as south of, so I'm leaving it for the goldfinches. You can't feel guilty. That's, that's life. That's the season. And you, this is the time that you rejuvenate taking off brown leaves, though eventually I will be taking the whole plant out. This is cucumber, and though it's pretty done, it's still throwing a few cucumbers. I picked one last night. But this is the time of the year you kick back, enjoy the holiday season. And if, you don't, if you're on your own, you can still watch things on TV. I, I personally, I talk about this all the time. I like the holiday movies because they're uplifting. Or at least try to watch the ones that are uplifting. There's been a couple that I didn't find that uplifting. But you know, you want to you want to take a break. Think about it. Nature's taking a break. When you're under snow, I mean things are going on, of course, in the garden, whether you're working there or not. The microbes are still underground, they're still doing their thing because the soil itself isn't going to be completely frozen. It's still livable. We'll keep going. So, oh yeah, this is nice. I have not used this yet. Oh my God, I wonder what they cost. Just a simple, see how light it is? It's so easy to move around. Yeah, nature's taking a break. A lot of your plants, of course, lose their leaves. Your big trees, your vegetable plants go because they're very seasonal. They're not gonna grow all year long. Some of them do, it depends on where you are. 
you're in Southern California, then yeah, you can grow tomatoes all year. You can grow cilantro now and onions, especially your green bunching onions. But I don't grow bunching onions. I grow walking onions, which is, you know, they're actually the same. They grow the same. They don't mind the winter at all. And then come spring, they have babies and you have all the babies coming out. Right now I'm trimming back a squash plant. And think about it, the leaves that are on the bottom are not doing anything, you know, any, anything at all. They're not doing any good, so I'm going to take them off anyways because there's no fruit there. The leaves that are next to the fruit are actually the ones that are going to be feeding the plant. That is the fruit. So I'm going to leave that. That's really nice. See, there's this one closer to the bottom, and this one is too. There's no fruit there. So let it concentrate on what's there. Okay, so we got that. I'm not going to bother with that. If you garden, whoa, I think I will take this out. If you garden and make it difficult, you won't do it. You just won't do it. You'll get to the point where it's a job and you got enough work to do. And why would you do another job? That's, that's the whole thing. So you want to make it pleasurable for you and your family. If you've got kids, you want the kids to enjoy themselves. This, this was my box garden. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. And then, of course, I still have the tool here. Oh, I'm leaving the tool. I have a Swiss chard down here growing, and the tool is a windbreak. So it's been growing really, really good. All right, so I got that one out. That was my orange tomatoes, I think. I think it was the sun gold. And I took a cutting before the plant died back. They're not as hardy as some of the other ones. This is what I need to take out. It's going to need more than a scissors. So I figured I'd come out here for a little bit. Then I'm going to go in and get some stuff done in the house I need to do. I'm going to have to go do the hummingbirds anyways. Because they were not out of food. but They're going through their food a lot. I keep putting up more feeders, so I was telling Gary, gee, there's not that many hummingbirds. But that's not the thing. You have a dozen feeders out the window, and each feeder can sit at least 10 birds, and they only feed and then leave. It doesn't look like that many, but when you're going through gallons of food a day, that's how you know you've got a lot. This I may take out later. It's not doing any harm, so I'm just leaving that. My main thing is I want to fill up as many buckets as possible and then I will have you know for the plants to grow because I'm going to put a bunch of leaves and stuff on the bottom I'm going to be very particular this coming spring on any soil that I decide to buy let me get some of this trim because you may not be able to hear me And it's good if you want to chop them up a little bit. If you've got big, thick stems, just chop them up a little bit. So this way they'll break down quicker. That's all. You don't have to, but it will break down quicker. The other thing you can do is just chop and put it back. By the time you come back, they'll be so... Oh, soil. I think I've got something here. I have... No, just flowers right now. Lots and lots of flowers. Yeah, let's do a little bit of a trimming. Get off what it doesn't need. Yeah, no fruit there, so you take that off. No fruit there. Okay, and we'll see if it makes any fruit. If not, come spring, cool, drop, and that's it. Okay. Yeah, if you cut up your stems, they'll just break up bigger. I don't know how far my mic will go. So I better not go all the way out. I did a lot in the chair garden the other day. That's, you know, that's what I wanted to try, the shopping cart. And you know what? I think I really do like it. And this is walking onions. Actually, I might move the leaves, the brown leaves in here. They'll become part of the soil. You can always dump a ton of your leaves on the bottom of your tote. If it's draining really good, then you don't have to take it apart. If it's not draining, then you want to take apart redo it around the drain holes at least and start over but if it's still draining that means it's still got a lot in there breaking down it hasn't blocked anything up because you don't want it to block things up but you can drop it all in there now if you want or early spring before you plant and then 
You can even put a layer of potting soil on top. That's all you'll have to do. And then plant whenever you're ready, right away, or when your seeds are ready, but you can have it all ready that way. See, I can just do it this way. Then I'll have to drag it around and find out where I want to put it, though I am looking for stuff. That's why I'm collecting, because I want to set up new totes. Okay, this one, let's see, same thing here. Trim that all down and let all this break down. That's going to become your soil. I've got a zucchini down there. And here you want to clean up your onions. And with the green onions, you use that. You use walking onions as you would use green onions. And then if you are in desperate need of a regular onion for something, you can pull it out and use the small bulb on the bottom. Now keep in mind, once you pull it out, it's done. You have no more onion that will grow back. But if you have a ton of them like us, it won't matter because they, they produce on their own. They're like guppies. They keep having their own live babies. So you just pull those out as soon as the babies are ready. Got videos on that. Plant them. Okay, I'm just gonna cut all this up. This will be really nice. And then you'll have all the onions you want. So you can use them as green onions and then you can use them as little white onions because they have small, they look like, almost like a shallot. They look like little small onions. These are pretty big. I don't want to pull any out. They're really nice. These are really nice. If I'm not going to eat it, then I'm going to take it off the plant and turn it into plant, either plant food or plant soil. You can take off all the yellow if you want, or you can leave it. Okay. Well, I think that's, that's enough for right now. I've got a bucket full already. Just talking to you, I've got a bucket full. Another leaf I can take off. Now, there's a lot of colored totes right now. I've seen some for $55 for six of them, I think. They've even had eight for $55. They'll have the red ones now, and then after Christmas, if they didn't sell them, they'll be cheaper. Walmart still has them cheap. If you don't see them for under $10 for the gray ones, the smaller ones, and they're, what, 18 gallons, you ask them. That means they're out because they're on their website, and they do carry them, and they get them from Sterlite. They have another brand, too. They're fine, too. I'm thinking of going, I like color. I'm thinking of going more into color. I like to be able to see them. I think they look so pretty. When I go back and see red totes and green totes. But you know, everybody does it the way they want. How nice that is. This is all soil. Now, we're going to talk a lot about this as spring comes. We're going to have to be careful. This is no joke and no way around it. We're going to have to be very careful on any soil that any of us purchase. I've had a problem. So many of you have had a problem. You, you know, you contact me and told me you failed in gardening. Nothing grew. Well, it wasn't your fault. It was the soil. I've got videos on that that I've talked about. I have theories of what happened if they get their soil or I should say, if they get their material to make the compost, and it's got, let's say, herbicides in it, persistent herbicides in it, if they're coming off of golf courses, wow, they put all kinds of stuff in that things, and you just don't know what's in it, and some of it does not break down for years. Then it comes to us. They don't test all the time, these companies, because the cost. It costs a lot of money to test, so they just put it out. Sometimes, you know, they just, they don't know. They really, truly don't know. And you don't know. I've seen people on TV showing these companies, oh, look, they collect everything, and everybody's recycling nowadays, right? So if they have to make it in the compost by law and recycle it, well, some of it's coming even from cabinet shops. Well, that's fine, but what about some of the wood that's treated? There's things in it, so they'll last for a long way. Look at this, I have two zucchinis on here. You know, this is scary. You better take care of that one. I've got two zucchinis on this one. About the size of your finger. If they are composting everything these days, 
and we're putting it in our garden and we can't grow, that will stop people from gardening. And you don't want to stop from gardening. It is important to, to be able to grow something because not all the food that you're getting in the store have nutrients in it. So you want to be able to add something that you have that's alive. And that is so important. Look it up. So much food is now treated. So it will have a long shelf life. And that's not good for us. If you're buying, let's say, soups, canned soups, you want to add it in. Sometimes I add it in to things I've grown. Here's the issue. If it's got potassium chloride or anything like that in there, which keeps your vegetables in your soups from breaking down, think about it. They put that in there so when you open up that can up to two years, you have a nice piece of carrot, let's say. Okay, that's a good thing. But that chemical, you're ingesting that, your gut's not going to break that down. It actually could cause problems. Just think about the consequences on some of this stuff. So I'm not saying don't use it. I'm saying make sure that you're putting something in your body that you grew. I don't care if it's parsley on a windowsill, lettuce. Lettuce is the easiest thing to grow. I'm going to have, I have lettuce everywhere. I'm going to have more lettuce this year. I'm going to wheel it around. I've got all these different ideas. Even in the summer, I grew lettuce. It's alive. That's the thing. What you are growing on your windowsill, whether it's a walking onion growing on your windowsill, garlic. I'm growing a lot of garlic now. I buy the bulbs from the store, organic. I put them in water or in a flower pot. And sometimes I take, after I break them all apart, I've got the video on that. Then I take the whole thing and chop it up and put it in whatever I've cooked afterwards. So if you have soup and you chop it up and put it in after your soup is done boiling, put it in when it's hot, it will still kind of cook in. You're actually getting everything for your body by putting in live food. You want something that's alive, please. That is so important. You don't want everything that's from the store right now. Get some stuff that's alive. Look at the things you can grow. You know, you can do sweet potato. Put a sweet potato on your windowsill. Grow that and add the leaves to your food. I make a green drink. Shame on me, I stopped for a while. I don't know why, I just stopped. And here's the thing. I can feel the difference when I don't have it and when I do have it. And that's greens from my garden. So we need to get stuff in our body. And so that's, that's kind of the things I want to, I keep thinking about and want to talk about. We need to get food that's alive in our body, number one. And we need, when we go to garden, we need to make sure we get soil that's good. There's been certain stores, including the store that I like, I didn't like their soil. There are a couple of them. Two stores, I bought their potting soil, and none of it was any good. One was completely gone. Anything I put in there never grew. I feel like throwing it away, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer it. It sounds crazy, but this is totes here layered. I'm going to find an area where I'm going to dump the soil in there. I'm going to throw in a bunch of collard leaves and stuff, and then I'm going to put a tote on top with the holes up. This way, there's no cross-contamination. Now, while that soil on the bottom is sitting there doing nothing, and I have a tote sitting on top of another tote with all that non-growing soil, once it starts to grow, because it's all going to be watered, you have to make sure the bottom one has holes, it starts growing weeds and all kinds of stuff starts taking off, you'll know. Then you'll know, okay, it's now okay to start using. And if something grows in there, you're okay. It's not that it's going to hurt us or anything. It isn't. What it's going to hurt is we won't grow because it's designed to stop things from growing. So once it starts to grow, I'm not going to waste it, then I will start to use it. If it doesn't grow and it sits for a couple years and still doesn't grow, well, maybe then I'll toss it because I don't know what contaminated it. That's the problem with everybody now recycling and all the recycled stuff that is considered yard waste, food waste, we don't know what got in there. And then it goes to these facilities that break down the compost to make it in the compost. And then they sell it to us or give it to us. 
That's the issue. We don't know what it is. It could have been a nothing that's going to break down in a matter of a few months. And it could have been something in there that could take years. So I will tell you one thing. I have nothing to do with them. I know a lot of people don't want to buy, that, buy it for different reasons. But I have never had a bad bag of miracle Grow. If you can afford something like Dr. Earth, that will be really good. Dr. Earth, most of that is organic. I have never heard of an issue from Dr. Earth. And you should be okay with that. But here is the issue. A lot of the really good soil, a little one cubic foot bag of soil, and they're starting to call it now quartz. They're getting into the quartz. You know, the problem with, with those is they're expensive. You can get a nice bag of miracle Grow potting mix. They're yellow or blue, and they can be anywhere from, well, the, one the ones that are one cubic foot, $10, sometimes less. I've never had a bad one. My daughter uses it religiously, and she's never had a bad one. On some of the store ones, store-bought ones, some that came from the W store, and some that came from the A store, they were, they were bad. They were just bad. There was no growing in them. So that's why I think I am done this year. It's not worth it for me to save a little bit of money at this point on soil when I use such a small amount because I'm making my own. The whole top, I should say, will be just the, the, not the whole, yeah, the whole top, about one to two inches will be potting soil I buy if I want to use potting soil. Sometimes I don't use it at all. But the whole bottom will be leaves, dried leaves, green leaves, all that. And that's where you're saving your money. And not only that, you're not being cheap. That's the way Mother Nature does it. Everything falls and falls and wind blows and knocks everything around. And then what happens? The rain comes and everything grows. That's the natural way to grow. And that's the way I prefer to grow. But sometimes I want something like a little potting soil to get started. And not always. So we'll get more into that in the spring because so many of us are not gardening. We're kicking back. Some of us are feeling guilty. Don't feel guilty. Nature takes a break. You need a break. Enjoy yourself. Find something to do. Bake. Cook. Buy something you like to eat. Have friends over. Call somebody. Watch YouTube videos. There's so many things you can do. And then once the weather starts coming, we'll garden. We'll start doing our seeds. Hey, I'm doing it even differently than I did last year. I still do the same, but I have different ways now. But the main thing we want to keep an eye on is soil. So I will be sticking with miracle Grow plus any soil I've already produced in here. You know, all the leaves I threw in there are gone. They're gone right away. That's going to be perfect to even use on the top or mix in with all the leaves I'm going to load in here. You can forever be making your own soil, whether you get it from your own yard, a neighbor's yard, or even the park. Take the leaves. I'd be careful with the park's grass clippings because if they treat that grass, that will be the worst part. The leaves may be not as bad. That should break down fairly quick because the trees are put their roots so far down that the odds are they're picking up the water that's not going to be that bad. And by the time you go to use it, it should be okay. I have not heard of leaves having a problem. But grass clippings, yes. You can have a problem with grass clippings. You can have a problem with different wood that can go in there because it might have been treated so it will last longer. And anything you grow, you have a plant that you told me failed, it didn't fail. It grew, it didn't produce anything except for leaves. That's your new soil. And that is what's going to continue to make your, your cycle of free soil just because it didn't make it, it still did something good for you. So I hope I kind of gave you an idea. And hey, this is working out really good. I'm going to be using this a lot because it's lightweight. And I can just drag it along. And it's easier. And I know the bucket's not going to tip if I don't look behind me. Like, what am I doing? Where am I going? Oh, oh another cucumber on the bottom. I didn't see that. Wow. Well. We'll keep the plastic over it for a little bit longer, and then once the whole plant goes, we'll just turn it in the soil, which is doing pretty much on its own anyways, and then we'll trim it down. But I've got a little one in here started. 
a little tiny one there, another one I'll be picking for dinner here, and I picked two, one about a week ago, and I picked one yesterday. So I think that's it. I think I've trimmed enough. I've got an entire bucket. And then I've got all this in here. I don't even know what's going in here. Okay, I see. And this, like I said, though I don't want it, I don't need it. And I do use this in my green drink, the sow thistle. I use the green leaves. I leave that for the birds. So with that, I hope I didn't bore you. I just thought I'd take you with me. I've already done the chair garden. And now I'll get some stuff done in the house and go feed hummingbirds. Yeah, I found a use for my grow bag now. Cool. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. <laughs>